good evening and welcome to yet another episode of our particular political build-up show and also the debate show that we're having and it's for the record. Sitting in for Ziad here tonight and joining me is Geraldine once again uh, for the host uh, for the show tonight. Tonight on studio as we build up two Sundays away from the general election, everyone in the country and not only in the country but around the world, all the eyes firmly fixed on Fiji as we head to the polls uh, in 2018. Tonight in studio with us is the General Secretary for Fiji First, ASA at Kayum, and a long-time uh, former journalist and also an NFP candidate, Kamal Ayer, who will be joining us today. So I'm looking forward to some lively debate tonight and talking about issues that will be affecting the common people, all Fijians, as we head to the polls, as I mentioned, on the 14th of November 2018. Not, not too far away, about two Sundays away, as I said, and two weeks. Diwali, a week before that, and straight after that is the poll. So, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for taking our time from a busy schedule and being here. We, we'll start with you, Kamal, we'll get straight into it. And everyone is still talking about it. Everywhere you go, it is the $5 minimum wage rate. And people are asking, and we've had the government uh, factory workers, uh, rather the owners and the factory operators who have come out and taken out a statement. Almost 7,000 workers will be affected if the $5 rate comes into play. So Delpa is saying four and uh, hope amazingly saying ten dollars but is nfp maintaining its stance after what has been said by most of the business owners that it might not be feasible and instead of maybe helping people it might be impacting the lives of ordinary fijians who might be going jobless cost of living will rise because the prices will go up but i believe nfp what what is your stance as we speak here tonight <coughs> Uh, thank you, Indra, and uh, good to be here. It's a myth that jobs will be lost or factories will be closed or cost of living will rise. We maintain our position of implementing a minimum living wage of five dollars. Uh, that's a figure not plucked out of thin hair, but containing the household income and expenditure survey of 2013 and 14, where a wage of 220 dollars per week was uh, set as need being needed uh, to support a family for their basic household needs. Mm. And as far as the threat by the garment factory owners is concerned, we are surprised that they have come now in the 11th hour to say that they cannot pay $5 an hour as wages to our mothers and sisters, 7,000 of them. We believe. You, you're talking about a last minute threat. And NFP took out a press statement earlier this week saying, uh, or last week, saying that the General Secretary of Fiji First was out talking to factory owners and some words that were used there threatening, and they also used that he had gone about to uh, threaten or using different tactics. W what did you mean by that? What, what did NFP mean by that in the press statement, if you'd like to elaborate on that? We didn't say threat. Mm. We said the General Secretary of the Fiji First was out there visiting the factories mm. last Friday. Mm. I think, I believe, five factories, as he said in his um, uh, family day at uh, Sukuna Park, telling workers that they will lose their jobs if the $5 minimum wage, uh, living wage is implemented. We have, we will, we have written to the government factory owners asking them permission to talk to the workers as well. Now we'll wait and see whether they provide us permission to explain so, our so, position. So NFP also wants to visit these garment factories and Absolutely. talk to the workers? Absolutely, we have a right. Your thoughts on that, uh, Mr. Syed Kayum? You know, it's very perplexing. Uh, firstly, Biman was supposed to be here, but he's not here, Kamal is here. Would have been great if he was here because, I mean, we had uh, this program in uh, CFL uh, with Vijay Narayan and uh, Biman was there, we did talk about minimum wage, in which uh, Biman obviously backpedaled mm. because uh, he was asked the question straight up by Vijay, saying, will you implement $5 an hour immediately? Uh, he backpedaled. He said, well, you know, first 100 days, 100 nights, first 100 days, we'll do consultations, we'll look at things. Uh, he then said, Cane cutters won't get $5 an hour, they'll get paid by the time, so there's already an exception made to it. Uh, you had the textile, clothing, footwear uh, council coming out and saying that the jobs could be under threat. Uh, it's not some 11th hour, I mean, NFP is into conspiracies. Uh, the reality is that 
a lot of people is dawned upon them that these people are actually serious about it. Uh, it's dawned upon them that other parties are actually serious about it without them obviously realizing the full economic impact, the financial impact, not just on individual businesses themselves, but also on the economy overall. Now, what is also really interesting, uh, their candidate promote uh, Chand, the bloke in uh, Vanuolevu, mm. and it's all out in Viber and YouTube and what have you, where he at a political party meeting said that they will now subsidize businesses mm who cannot pay the $5. So they'll pay the $1 or $2 additional, or even maybe more than that, because a lot of people, for example, do pay 268 Or for example, if they're paying $3. So they said that we will subsidize those individual businesses. And once they file the tax return, you know, they'll, they'll be able to give them the rebate and what have you. I mean, that is really hocus pocus stuff. Firstly, if you do the costing of that, we've done the costing of that. If you take all the small businesses, if you look at all the current um, employment, uh, uh, sorry, uh, employers who are paying people less than five dollars, you're looking at a cost of around about six hundred million dollars at least for government to subsidize. God forbid if these people get in, for them to subsidize these businesses. Mm. Now they're also forgetting that cane farmers at the moment don't. A lot of them farmers don't file tax returns, so they'll begin to start filing. Uh, have to file tax returns. What about those individual people who employ, for example, what we call unfortunately in Fiji house girls? No, what we call, I like to call them house help. They now have to file tax returns to be able to get the subsidy from them. If you talk to many people, for example, they may have a house help. And they may be paying them, say, 268 an hour at the moment. If all of a sudden they have to pay them $5, where will they get the funding from? So you see, before they've even started the policy, Biman Prasad has said, They'll make an exception. Mm. Mm. He said, we'll do consultations. Mm. Then you have Pramod Chan saying, we will actually sub subsidize. They're not even in agreement with that. Charanjit Singh has said, it'll become immediately, it'll become implemented. Soon after we win the election, we'll pass a law, everybody will get $5. Okay. Miman Prasad is saying 100, 100 days. Mm. So you see, there's a lot of uncertainty. Right. And I have to finish up this garment industry business because you see, the reality is, the capital is very mobile, in particular in the garment industry, right? So you have, for example, a company called Lindhurst. Lindhurst has a factory not just in Fiji, but also a factory in Sri Lanka. Huh. Now, we are not opposed to pay rises. In fact, Beni Marama was the first prime minister who had the audacity to actually in bring in minimum wage, $2, okay. went up to 232 went up to 268 These people are Johnny come lately into this, uh, this space. Now, what we have said in the budget as announced, we need to do a study and look at increments of salaries, not just for those on the unskilled workers, but everybody. You see, because there is a myth now, that Mr. everybody... Now, we, we, we've got a lot of issues that we would like to cover. But, but there's so a myth that everybody is getting 268. Mm -hmm. Minimum wage for different categories of employment is like 350 $4, mm -hmm. $5, $50, $6. Mm -hmm. So they deserve, the boiler maker, the forklift driver, they also deserve a pay rise. So we need to look at the We'd like to get uh, Mr. Ayer's uh, views on the, the, um, the differences that are, be the different views rather, that are being stated by NFP. One is the uh, leader himself saying that everyone can afford $5 an hour to pay minimum wages. Then you have one of your candidates saying that it's going to be subsidized. So it seems like there are differing views being given. What, what, what's your no, statement no, on that? It's not differing views. The view is that $5 is affordable. It can be paid by the employers. Now, how will it be paid by the time this program is aired on Sunday? Our manifesto would have already been out. Oh, on to the on that note, it was supposed to come out on the 29th, but... No, it's coming out this Thursday. Okay. So as we speak, the manifesto is out. The, the manifesto is out. Okay. Okay. It, contains, it contains the policy initiatives needed to implement the <coughs> minimum living wage. Now let me go back to what uh, Mr. Sayed Kayyum said about uh, cane farmers and uh, cane cutters of uh, getting to the minimum living wage and that our leader said there is exception there. Now I want to ask this question. Are they currently being paid the current minimum uh, wage rate of two dollars sixty-eight? Are they? Is Have there? Is there? Is there? Is there enforcement? Uh, is there enforcement? Uh, so okay. What Would, is would he, you have I, to know? I mean, if he goes through, then I can answer the question. Is there? Is there enforcement? That's one. Right. 
because we believe cane cutters right now many of them are getting more than two dollars sixty eight an hour cane cutting is different it's 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 based on piece rate they go they work for two hours or something early in the morning they cut cane but mr Syed Kayum, you've been let, the minister let, let, for let, 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 we'll, we'll get to that yeah. we'll, 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 we'll touch on your on on your on your answer in a bit but just just to expand on that you were saying that the you're saying that uh, cane cutters are not getting two dollars sixty eight an hour but a national minimum wage is a national minimum wage by that virtue wouldn't a cane cutter be getting two dollars sixty eight an hour that's i mean you've hit the nail on the head See, he's talking about enforcement. Enforcement is a separate issue altogether. See, you pass a law, right? So you say, this is the national minimum wage. National minimum wage means it's applicable across the board. Now, you cannot then, therefore, go and make exceptions to it. If, for example, certain businesses, certain employers aren't paying the minimum wage, that's a separate issue. It's about enforcement. It's about compliance. It's in the same way we make a law to say, you cannot go and beat up somebody and steal from them. The fact of the matter, the law is there. Whether people follow it or not is another issue. So this is a breach Back of the law. Back to your answer, Mr. Ayer. So, so is Mr. Sayed Kim admitting that there is lack of enforcement of the even the current mega rate of two dollars <laughs> sixty? Very, very interesting. It's, it's, not, it's not a laughing guy guy not Mr. Sayed Kim. Question. Question. <laughs> very interesting. It's very not interesting. Not interesting. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the, those answers. We will continue with this. We are asking him. <laughs> we will continue with this because it's very yeah. interesting. Thank you uh, very, very much for the uh, for the input from the two gentlemen. <laughs> You want to know from the General Secretary of Fiji first Absolutely, yes. if it is being enforced, enforced right the to country. the letter of law okay. and, and particularly so for cane cutters. Okay. So he's asked you a direct question, yes. Mr. Said uh, Yes. See, the fact of the matter is, again, mm. it's about enforcement. Right. Whether people are paying that, the employer is paying that, is something that you need to see whether individual people are doing it. If somebody is breaching the law, you report it to the Ministry of Labor. In the same way, there are a lot of people, for example, who don't want to, who are not deducting FNP from their, um, uh, from their employees, mm. they're not paying it. So there's laws, new laws have been brought about. The, but that is not the issue. The issue is he's trying to obfuscate the issue. You see? No. This is the kind of pedestrian argument you get from an FPM. An FP for him, his party leader, the candidates, you know, this is the Age piche approach to things. You say you want to introduce on, on $5 dollar minimum wage, introduce it. Tell on us that, whether it's note. viable or not. Tell us it's feasible if or it not. Were to it be is not feasible. If it were to be introduced, $5 minimum wage, mm. right, then how would you then enforce it, making sure that you're saying right now $2.68 is not being paid? <coughs> then you bring it up to a higher number. Then how will you make sure that that number is going to be paid? Firstly, firstly, Geraldine, Indra. It seems the that, that, that is what Fiji he is First implying. So. has basically admitted that they cannot even enforce the current rate of two dollars sixty-eight. I have not admitted to anything. You have. That's your logic. You it's have, a warped you have, logic. Have you have it's a warped warp logic. logic. It is warped logic. Yeah. Focus on the issue. Focus on your five dollars. Come on. All right. All right. Okay. Let's I, talk about I, am, I am saying Focus that we will, we will, we will enforce okay. the current the rate of five dollars an hour. Unlike the known enforcement of the current mega rate of $2.68, okay. it's not a laughing matter. Come on, come on. Come on. Let me, let me, let me, let just me. a quick one. I'll, I'll give you a chance again for this one. Just a quick question. You really haven't touched on it. I think the viewers would also like to know. So as pointed out by Promote Chan, that uh, you'll be looking at tax rebate. Uh, the leader, of, honorable leader of the National Federation Party has said they'll take 100 days in office if they do form the next government. And then you have uh, Charanjit Singh, who has gone about saying that uh, it will be immediately. Why different, well, different sorts of views coming out from the party? Inconsistency. In, I, why I, is that happening? I haven't seen what Charanjit Singh said. It, it is on social media. He's put it on his page. Well, I'm not on social media. Uh, you are very active on social media. And well, also I'm not on social media. Well, well, NFP is very active on social media. Gentlemen, gentlemen, keeping, keeping the narrative. You're meaning NFP. NFP yeah. is very active on social keeping media. Keeping to the narrative, keeping to why the narrative, sir. Let me answer the question. Yes. Mr. Charanjit Singh has uh, come out saying previously yeah. that right now he, uh, he is a businessman, correct? He has uh, employees and he has stated that he is not going to be implementing $5 an hour to those earning below $5 an hour currently because he's saying that it would be unfair 
to his competitors who are then paying their employees less than $5 an hour. So it seems as though that's it's a bit contradictory. That's, that's, that's Charanjit Singh's view. But he's a candidate. Right, right now, he's right a now candidate. As, as the leader said, Say to you, you can't even enforce two dollars sixty-eight. No, no, so, forget so, that. So, but so you, no, yes, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't enforce two sixty-eight. Fees. So let me answer the question. <laughs> right now, hmm. there is no legislation in place. Right, there is no legislation in place to enforce uh, enforce five dollars living wage. Hmm. So Mr. Singh is right in that sense. Right, as far as the party leadership is concerned, that announced the policy. The party leadership is paying not five, more than that. I, for myself, pay more than five dollars to people. Okay, so you you are saying, Kamal, that you right. do pay and five. Coming coming back to the issue, but, of but who do you pay five dollars to? Also, would like to know to people who work for us, who work people for NFP. Who so are you right going on record, a, Kamal, saying we have an unskilled worker who's being paid five dollars an hour? Okay, so, Mr. Ayer, are you saying good that good right now you're paying unskilled workers okay, more $5. than five dollars, six dollars an hour? Yes, Which absolutely. The party. The but party, yes. Okay. So, okay. See, but the business candidates can't pay the party five dollars now. The party okay. is paying. So you the see, leader logically, is paying okay. the logically, okay. see, let me just point this out, and mm -hmm. you can stop me. Logically, the argument is completely flawed. The candidate says, "I'm not going to pay five dollars," which legally not enforced. They are saying they'll pay five dollars, even though the law is not there. They're doing. It. You see, which one is it? Okay. Well, we're not which here to put words in anyone's mouth, policy. gentlemen. We're here to get your views. Mr. Chairman, the policy makers are walking the talk and paying five dollars an hour, right? Stop. <laughs> right. okay. So you go and enforce the minimum wage of ten cutters in that door. Come on, come on. Just coming back, I would really like you to answer this. Why has there been inconsistent views? Is it that that is their personal view and not the party stand, or is it a party stand of a different point of view of Pramod, also together with the, the leader of the NFP and also together with the Charanjit Singh, on if you form government? How will you implement this five dollar minimum? Because people want to know the Fijians, the ordinary people, before they go to the polls on the 14th of November, they want to know what is the exact stand of NFP. And then I, as I know, this show is recorded, the manifesto is out, etc. But what is the stand right now? The unequivocal stand is that five dollars an hour <coughs> living minimum wage will be paid by each and every employer. And it's going to come into effect? It's going to come into effect, as our leader has said after extensive consultations within the first 100 days of us being in government. Okay. That is the General answer. Secretary, quick one here, and I know uh, Vijay has touched on this, Stanley has touched on this, and no qualms in saying this about them, job losses. Now, the factory operators have come out and said 7,000 odd people employed, and we're also talking, ABC News talking to a few of the others, I've had a security company as well come to us and say, if you put this minimum wage rate, <coughs> It is going to not only give you more money, but it's going to raise your expenses uh, to offset it. The prices of goods and services are going to go up. For example, a security company might start charging more. That could relate in people not being able to afford security, etc. And they want uh, consultations, and they are claiming there is no consultation. What have you heard from the factory uh, uh, bosses and owners that you have uh, met with? And what is their stand on that issue that has been raised by some of the political parties on the minimum wage rate? And why hasn't it been implemented in the sense that of five, ten, fifteen dollars is that everyone speaks about? Okay, let, uh, let, I'd like to make a few points. Firstly, sure. uh, when you calculate the cost of living, it's not only the wages you look at; you look at other forms of benefits. So, for example, previously, uh, before the Beni Marama government, the Fiji First government implemented, you did not have free education, so that came out of your pocket. You had to pay bus fares for your kids; that came out of your pocket. Uh, you had, uh, you know, things like milk and midbigs. You had textbooks. All of those things came out of your pocket. So now you have more money in your pocket. If you previously earned more than $8,600 a year, you pay taxes. Now you don't pay any tax until you earn $30,000. So people at the bottom end of the socioeconomic scale, in fact, are getting paid many of their day-to-day -day living expenses by government. 50% of the electricity cost is paid for by government if you earn less than $30,000. If you earn less than $30,000, 90,250 liters of free water is given if you're connected to the reticulated water system, Water Authority of Fiji. So that needs to be taken into account. That's what you call social wages, which they don't talk about. They're completely ignoring that. Now, they have caught on this sort of cliché term of living wage. So that actually is negated by the fact that we have a lot of social wages. The other issue is about the, um, the impact. I did not go to meet the employers. I went to met, meet the workers. Mm. The TCF had already made their position known. And I'm meeting other workers too. 
not just over there, lots of people. I meet a lot of small business people. The guy who's running a shop, somebody's employing four or five people. Now, they've all conveyed the fact that it's unsustainable. We have said one day in Fiji, yes, minimum wage will be $5. What we are saying, let's do a review. Let me get back to my point. It's a responsible way of doing it. It's not a sudden jump. Right. When you have sudden jumps, it sends shocks into the <coughs> economic space. That's the problem. So we're saying, let's do a review. And also, they are not focused on the spillover effect on people who are already getting a minimum wage that somebody maybe already somebody already is getting 650 minimum wage an hour. Look at the way 10 wages councils, the sectors. They're already getting 650 an hour. So what will that person say? The person who's got 650 an hour, he or she may have actually gone to get a certificate. Right? They spend maybe two years or 18 months, whatever it is, to get a certificate, either a diploma or maybe some form of trade certificate. Now, if you have somebody who's now who's got completely no qualifications per se, no training, now he's getting five dollars an hour. This person is getting six fifty an hour. I said, hey, they did not go anywhere and spend two years to get this qualification. I now want my salary to go up. So, in in fact, Just it should be logically it should it should logically should be fifty percent. It should be ten twelve dollars an hour. The spillover effect is what you call a huge inflation. Hyperinflation will get factored in. Because obviously businesses don't uh, bear the cost themselves. They actually pass it on to the goods and services. Okay, the General difference about the garments is it's not sold in Fiji. Mm -hmm. They're competing with Bangladeshis and Sri Lankas and etc. all of that. I know you've been wanting to say something, Mr. Ayer. Yeah. If you'd like to uh, have your say on that, just for one minute so we can move on to other issues. We can't be talking about minimum wage Bangladesh. all night. Mm -hmm. Are we... Are we being compared to Bangladesh? Our, our women, our mothers, our sisters are being compared to Bangladeshi <coughs> workers. They no, are minimum. No. They are, this they is very really modest stuff. What I'm saying, they are minimum, they are minimum is, wage has just been increased. The hardcore reality in to is that, that these garment US workers, ninety-eight dollars per month. These garment factories okay. actually compete with the world market. Okay. US the ninety-eight dollars right. per month. And, and Before they don't we get to that, they had only two and a half thousand women. workers in the okay. garment work, industry. Work in the okay. garment We've now brought up to eight thousand workers. Gentlemen, gentlemen, we're all talking over each other. We'll 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 carry on with the issue. I know this five dollars is generally getting a little bit out of it. Yes. Let's don't let's understand let's economics. That's a problem. Let's let's see. See. If, you can, if you can increase the not understand salary economics and allowances of point. cabinet and the prime minister, we can surely increase these wages of our ordinary so workers. Just quickly, see, 20 see, seconds. Let me just tell you. And that was done without consultation. One second, sir, <laughs> this will be done with consultation. Says Maintaining $5 an hour? You're, you're talking nonsense. That's I'm not problem. talking nonsense. <laughs> That's a problem. No, no, no. no. You okay. see, your leader is saying $5 an hour, but then you just said, but we'll consult. What if in the consultation comes out, there'll be jobless. Say, okay, we'll do $5, but maybe we'll do it over three years. Okay. All right, See, so that's we'll, the point. We'll, we'll get that's to what they're going to do. You are intellectually constipated. Mr. Sayed Kayu and Mrs. Ayer. The leader told me I'm intellectually defec verbally defecating. Yeah. He's telling yeah. me I'm intellectually what? Well, constipated. We, we need <laughs> to press. We, we need important. to get to other matters. We can't be what? talking about minimum okay. wage. So, we, so we, I think exceptions. What do you It's better to be circumcised. I said it's better. It's better than saying... But to be circumcised and uh, politically important. I never that's said what I said. That's what I said. What do you mean about circumcised? Tell me. That's what you said on uh, Stanley Simpson's uh, program. What I said when you quoted uh, uh, Karawaki. That's yes, what you said. I said. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, no, no, you don't get, don't misquote me, my friend. I'm not I misquoting. I'll say what you said. You see, no, no, you are not known to tell the truth. Let me tell you this. You are lying. I said, you are lying. I said okay. that. Okay. We'll let, let, no, no, I need to say we'll it. I, to I said Mr. that in, in Parliament, Karavaki stood up mm -hmm. and insinuated and made a comment saying those men who are circumcised are better off than those who are not. That's what he said. And then I turned around and I said, I looked at Bhiman Prasad and I said, say something. And in Stanley Simpson's show, I said, just because I am circumcised, it does not give me the right to judge somebody who is not. And if somebody is not circumcised, it does not give them the right to judge somebody who is. That's what I said. So Get those your were your right. statements. No, you said even something more. You said, the first of all, you said I'm not known to tell the truth. Give me one example where I haven't spoken the truth. Mr. Just, just, now. You. just now. I'll tell what, you what, what you actually said. I'll tell you what you actually said. You and Bjorn, when Stanley asked you that about the use of... Impotent. Uh, impotent. Yes. You, you said, I, I don't know whether Biman is... Uh, uh, is politically important, but I don't know whether 
I, I can't I can't judge whether he's physically important. You said no, that. No, no. <laughs> you said that. No, no, no. You said that. Let me go. Look at the 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 And he said, what do you mean by that? I said, well, obviously, there's two ways of looking at impotency. One is factually, one is uh, figuratively, one is uh, literally. Obviously, I said, I can't take literally, right? right? Yeah, that's and what I said. Yeah. No, 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 you, you, you twist it here. Okay. Okay. I so said, obviously, I can't do it factually. Uh, literally, yeah. I don't know. So. Okay. But I said, figuratively, he's impotent. So I said it again we, we, in the video show. We've sort of, uh, yeah, okay, we've, we've made a point here. These guys are just circumcision and non-circumcision. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much for that. Don't think that. Thank you very much for that. Kamal, we'll, come on, we'll get to you now. You said it. Prem Singh said it in 2014. Yeah. I know people in Vatoli who said it. Last no, time, last time, was Baladas. Last time was Baladas. Now you're saying, Baladas Baladas now you're saying Prem Singh. No, Prem Singh said it too. Yeah. Baladas said yeah. it too. Yeah. I'm saying Provide it openly. Provide a single shred of evidence. You see, this is the thing. Provide a single. This is the point. When Mr. Faisal Koya asked you to provide evidence. You have it. When you say to them about Firoz Ghulam Mohammed, oh, fake account, Viber thing. But they have not, you know, this is not my Viber. They have not come out and made an emphatic statement. Thank you, thank you, gentlemen, for that. Come on, come on, just, just. So uh, go and do it. Thank you for that. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So quite an exciting discussion there. I think we've got <coughs> a question as well touching on Firoz Ghulam Mohammed. Secretary yes. General has said, right. uh, Geraldine. So just, of course, just to remind you <coughs> that this is, of course, a political debate. Both of you will get your chance to talk to each other and, you know, about each other. But let's not talk over each other. All right. So getting to Firoz Ghulam Mohammed, you've just said that. Uh, NFP has not come out emphatically saying that he is uh, saying <coughs> things that shouldn't be said, inciting religious and racial uh, uh, vilification, using statements like that. Mm -hmm. Now, Biman Prasad has said that uh, on Straight Talk, he had said that the police and the CID have done their investigations and they've said that those are fake accounts. However, I did do a little bit of uh, checking around and I saw that some of the videos in which he made those utterances clearly depict Mr. Firoz Ghulam Mohammed. So then how can that be determined as being fake? What would you say to that? And what's the party stand on that? When, which, it's which, when, which, when which, it clearly which, says... Which videos are you talking about? Straight after he had <laughs> been... When he had applied to be a <laughs> candidate... Like a child. When he had been... Let's stick to that. Let's stick to that. Come on. As, as <laughs> Geraldine said, uh, there are three videos that came out straight after the emails that were sent yes. by the Secretary General of Fiji First to your Honorable Leader which they replied was copied to the media. We've touched on that issue in the past. I believe Geraldine is speaking about the video where he came out and he attacked uh, uh, the Attorney General, uh, the, uh, sorry, the Secretary General of the Fiji First Party. And then there was another video where he came and he said that uh, he was never ever going to contest the elections unless and until the Minister of Elections and the current government changes. And there was another one lately that he put up as well. So what we're asking is, He's still a member of NFP. Uh, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, if he's still a paid member or not. He's not a candidate. He's but, not a candidate. Okay. What is the party stand on its members as well, Kamal? Uh, I know your leader has said they do not support anything which is uh, along the wrong morals and wrong ground. But what is the stand on uh, Firoz Ghulam Mohammed and his continuous attacks on social media, which he's claiming to be fake? Indra, the initial um, accusations that Firoz was indulging in... Uh, racial bigotry was made, no, made known to us and the leader called him to the office both him and I had a chat with him we got our IT experts to check his Facebook accounts this was in July I still remember that day quite vividly because we just came back from a funeral okay of burying our dear friend Mr. Temos Rivalo and we found out that the account on which those comments were supposed to have been made was indeed not his. His official page did not have those comments. We found that out. So we asked him, you go report this to the police, which he duly did. Right? And that's why the leader said that police also investigated him. He was also investigated once earlier. Right? What he has said as a member 
of videos attacking Mr. Sayed Kayu. Party leader has told him to go and report that to the police and let police or FIKE, whoever, to do his job, right, to charge him okay. if he's guilty or if he's exonerated. So That's NFP fine. does <coughs> not condone right. anything of such matter if it is, you said, if it is true. It we will condone what Firoz Gulam Mohamed said. Anything. Now I'm going to touch on a bit of a sensitive side, uh, Mr. Sayed Kayum. Charanjit Singh, in his recent post, and he believe I, I think he's the first candidate who's done that in a recent post, attacked the Secretary General of Fiji First, uh, dead, the former parliamentarian and uh, well-renowned uh, parliamentarian and who's well-known in circles. Charanjit Singh put uh, up the name of uh, the Secretary of Fiji First, dead. Yeah. What is the party's stand on that? Because that is the first personal or family attack that has been put by your candidate. Have you spoken to him about that? Did he attack his uh, dad? He did. He put up a name. He put up a phone number as well, which was in the public domain, uh, which is still there. We've got screenshots of that as well. He did put up a mobile number. As what what did he actually say? On the he did say, I'll put it quickly uh, because yeah. of the time yeah. factor. He did say that in uh, 2014, <laughs> 2014 yeah. he gave a donation to the Fiji First Party. Then he was asked by the Sayed Kayum senior to contest, to apply for a ticket on the Fiji First banner. Then he said he's a still, em still employed, he's 81 years old, he's still employed. Then he touched on the fact that he does not think if, it, if the Secretary General of Fiji First was in his place, he would do the same. He's given a mobile number. Do you think it's morally right to involve family members or keep the debate and all the accusations candidate against candidate? What, what's well, the stand? Well, has he said more than that? He's also put up a second post as because well. Whatever you've told mm. me so far, he's not taking his dead. Mm. Because I believe somebody read that post to mm. me mm. and he said that, you know, it's part of his family or part of mm. his dear friend, mm. as a former parliamentary colleague, right. and quite effective one at that mm. too. Mm. I'm, I can say, I can vouch for that. He was the chairman of the Public Accounts Committee for seven years mm. and did a fantastic job. Mm. Right. But I have <coughs> not seen anything okay. there that he attacks him. Okay. But just, just a quick right. one. Uh, For involvement uh, of the family, I suppose what involvement Kimber is of trying the family, to say, Mr. involvement Ayer. of the family, mm. right, yes. is a sensitive thing, yes. which I agree, mm. which I agree. So you're right? denouncing it no, on nobody the should behalf. involve family. anybody's family member, right? Yeah. But I don't think he has used him as a sacrificial okay. lamb or something. Okay. He has just said, he may, that if Mr. Sayed Kayum was there, he won't be probably in be in employment, right? An elderly man like him. It's not only him, it's people like him. Mm. Right. If he's uh, taken it differently, friendly, that's, that's... No, no, I, I, in fact, I just wish you hadn't answered this question. Mm. I don't take those kind of things. That's mm. a personal matter. Mm. And you know, I've always been very private about family mm. things. So, I wish you hadn't asked mm. the question and he's obviously trying to justify it. Yeah. You see, the, 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 the point is this. Getting back to the Gulam Muhammad mm. thing and all of that. You know, he said, well, the Faki can charge him with yeah. the... You see, there are certain things, you have to have certain standards, certain moral codes, certain ethics. They are not punishable under the criminal code, criminal act. They suddenly fall on that. And the, the, the inconsistency in the supposed principal approach is this. Ramana Tikotigoda was accused of rape. As a provisional candidate, he was withdrawn. Dr. Yunus is currently being charged for sexual assault, rape, or whatever it is. And he very quickly resigned. His resignation was accepted. Uh, there's some other candidate of theirs who's recently been, I understand, charged by FICA for religious less mm. uh, racial vilification. He has not been withdrawn as a candidate. Now, Biman also on Vijay show, and he said it publicly, he said that um, he's innocent till proven guilty. That is the criminal procedure under the criminal justice system, yes. Mm. You are innocent until proven guilty. But there are certain standards, certain ethics, where parties take a principal position. Obviously, NFP took a principal position in respect of Romano Tikotigoda and Dr. Yunus. Now, uh, the other day when I said that, Biman said, oh, Dr. Yunus resigned himself. It, because somebody resigns, it does not mean you necessarily will accept it. Right? That's, that's the point of difference. But in this particular case, they've taken a very different position, and the principle has now varied. That is the issue. There are certain moral standards, ethics standards that you need to pursue. Whether a person is charged or not, 
Yeah, in the same way, for example, if you work in the banking industry, uh, if you do certain things that are not acceptable standards of behavior in the banking industry, even though you may not be charged, the bank will not necessarily employ you. And people do know that because the trust is broken. So our, our position is that there has not been an emphatic position taken by NFP in, in this respect. Well, how about we move away from uh, getting into personalized let, 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 let me answer, answer just, just, just one minute, Mr. Ayer. We need See, to get through a few more things. Then I'll answer to his. So you guys need to take a stand. Well, because he, he just... You, you raised the he, names he, of, some, no, no, some of the people who no, are not here no, no, to defend themselves. No, no, okay. No, no, please, just don't let get into it. Let me, let me right. let don't get into it. Don't get into it. We will move... I have a right. No, no. You as a host too, you people need to control it. I have a right. You raised the issue with him. You raised the issue of Romano or Dr. Yudhi. He raised the issue. He raised the issue. All right. We will give you one minute. You raised the issue about all of the principal position. Please. I have a right. You raised the issue of principal position. He raised his position. I have he raised right the he he Thank you. issue. Thank I responded to that. Thank you very much, Mr. Let's, let's move on to the next one. Uh, question of the party's integrity. Okay, well, we, we, we will address it if yes. we can later on, but let's, let's we will in, in the interest of time. That's only fair. Just, just I answer that. We will get to that mm. when, towards the end. We will, but moving on in the interest of time. Now, NFP candidate, yes, Aman Nath. He has claimed that shopkeepers are telling him that. Uh, he has spoken to shopkeepers who have said that they're going to support NFP, but they don't want the posters to go up. And the reason that they don't want the posters to go up is he is saying that the uh, shopkeepers are saying, it's a he said, she said thing, mm. that Fiji First Party has spies around. What do you say to that? I mean, what a nonsensical statement to make. I mean, he'll get up tomorrow and say that, you know, I've got some kind of super duper binoculars. I mean, it's stupid, frankly. I mean, you know, before the show we started talking, I, you know, I said to him in, in jest, and I said to him also, I said, you know, you're having private meetings. He said, oh, you had a private meeting in Simla, uh, oh, Sugar, what avenue? I don't know where Sugar Avenue is, but it's already Simla. I don't know where Sugar, I don't know the names of all the streets in Latoka. Then he told me you're there in that place. I said, yes, we had a meeting, we had a fundraising. There's nothing private about that. So, you know, it's like, he's the one who obviously knows where we had the donation funding and all that. It's not a private meeting. People who wanted to donate money to the party were invited. Not a private. So you see, I think they're a bit sort of, you know, paranoid. Okay. We know who invited they, 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 they're a bit paranoid. We'd see, like they, you see, they go. We know who invited them. Are okay. they, you tell your people okay, to invite come your people. What, What's been said what's, by your candidate? Why is that conspiracy? They are spies. They are spies around. Yeah. They are scared. <laughs> So we know that Fiji First earlier. people are out and about, and they, he is also on record saying that they are scared that they will most probably be victimized if they are seen openly supporting the National Federation Party. They're they're right. Is that true? The, there is there is there is fear no. there is fear among okay. so he, can, he, can, he can keep on saying that. There is fear is not What true. has happened? What has happened have, that has made him say that? Is there any come, evidence that we this have has come happened? across people who don't want to openly? display any NFP material for the fear of being victimized. And, and this is especially so small to medium businesses. Well, those sentiments have been echoed by uh, NFP candidate Parmod Chand. Even he has said that FFP is using fear tactics to mm. make sure that NFP supporters don't come to rallies, or don't come to campaign meetings. I, I think they're trying to justify their low turnout, basically. So they're trying to justify the low turnout. We, we so, when the, so, crowd, so, uh, so when the uh, media comes along, you see what I mean? <laughs> see, he, can, okay. he can do that, uh, and I can do that. Uh, There's no point. We'll, I don't know we'll, what's we'll the we'll purpose we'll of asking this question. We'll, we'll move on. Uh, the other issues is uh, maybe by the time we go to air with the show, your manifesto would be out already. You were talking about the 15 items, right? Exactly. 15 items that you will make zero or a vet on? Exactly. Right. All the time you were saying that these 15 items will come in your manifesto, which exactly. probably is out already. But prior to that, one of your candidates on uh, social media, again, on his page, on his campaign page, had already put uh, the... Yes, so actually... Yeah. Um, and Geraldine actually counted the... Yes, uh, um, I had a look at that, uh, and it was quite surprising because, of course, this picture was put out on the 20th of October, which is way before, of course, your manifesto would have come out. And your leader had also very specifically said on many different talkback shows and uh, appearances that the list would come out in the manifesto. However, one of your own candidates had put a picture 
there was a shopping trolley filled with goods and it had from what I could see what we could deduce was milk bread sugar flour rice tin fish oil tin mutton corned beef tea a total of about 10 and he had very very clearly stated these 15 items are going to be vat free now of course by the time this goes to <coughs> air like Indra said the uh, manifesto would be out would be clearly stated which ones would have zero vat but what do you say to that on the 20th of October a picture like that going up was he preempting the party's views was he giving I, some sort I of an insight I haven't seen the post yeah, yes. I haven't seen the post. well I happen to have a screenshot I haven't seen the Mr. post Ray. of the trolley or the shopping trolley what he, he or she was trying to imply I don't know <laughs> but I can certainly tell you there, there are 15 items on the list that includes the six items that were zero rated before. So Fiji why first. the reluctance to actually Fiji first, answer why Fiji he first, had done that though? Fiji first. I don't know about that. I can't speak for that candidate. I can speak for the party. I can speak for the leader. Yes. So what is the party and right. the leader's view on There that? are 15 basic food items that are zero rated plus there are few other items, essential items that he also likes to call it that will uh, have reduced duties to cushion the impact of rising cost of living. All right, Mr. Saad Kayum, you said in the 2014 Fiji First Manifesto <coughs> that there would be zero VAT on uh, certain food items. However, there was 9% VAT that was introduced across the board. Mm. You've made your views clear on that. But your party manifesto hasn't come out as far as we know as it goes to air on Sunday? Or would it be coming out later on this week? Soon. Again, another soon. Please, we would yes. really like to know when, because we're just about 14 days away, 14, mm. 15 days away from elections. By the time this goes to air, uh, would be even less. Mm. It'll come out very soon. Okay. So you don't want to tell us when it's going to come out. What about in that manifesto? Again, would you be talking about any food items that would be zero vat? You see, um, as I said to you in the show that I appeared a few weeks ago over here, that we are going to build upon the current policies of government. There are no surprises. Essentially, continuing <coughs> on the same path. We are essentially continuing on the very strong foundation that's already been built on the economy. As you know, that we provided, for example, a numerous number of uh, initiatives uh, to uh, not just grow the economy. We need to grow jobs. We we had 20,000 new jobs last year, 20,000 new jobs the year before that. Uh, we also had, of course, uh, it's investor friendly. Uh, private sector investment is a percent of GDP. Is uh, is very high now. We also have, of course, at the same time, a number of initiatives in respect of targeting people at the lower end of the socioeconomic scale, the tax rate. So what we want to do is maintain consistency uh, in our policy framework. So when you say maintain con con consistency, consistency would that mean you'd make changes to whatever was in the 2014 manifesto? Because it said zero, those, those items with zero VAT, but now, of course, those items do have VAT. So what, what would see, that reflect? If you, uh, you perhaps you uh, may not be understanding what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we need to maintain consistency in the policy framework. Okay. Now within the poli to, to be able to achieve the policy, you can carry different measures. Okay. So for example, if your policy framework is to maintain a competitive uh, you know, market, if your policy framework is, for example, to ensure that uh, people at lower and socioeconomic scale uh, don't have to pay, you know, increased costs, then you have various measures to implement that. Okay. So, for example, in our instance, yes, we did say zero rated, but we didn't, of course, we did a study, it took 18 months, we did not jump, you know, just made policies overnight. So we essentially then we looked at it, we looked at reducing VAT across the board, mm -hmm. and we also looked at the fact that there was huge levels of non-compliance by many businesses because of the, fact that the, the taxation system is very complex. So we simplified it. As a result of that, with compliance increased. Yes, people paid 9%, but the overall cost of your, you know, your everyday basket of groceries actually came down by at least 4.5%. We also, at the same time, for example, uh, reduced duty on many items. So you see, the policy framework is uh, that. Policy framework is overall objective. Then you do various measures to implement it. Okay. In the same way, if you have a policy framework to say, we want to increase the rate of home ownership. Then you carry out various measures. So, for example, at the moment we're doing housing grants, mm -hmm. we do land grants. We've got now a uh, uh, deal with the Reserve Bank of Fiji where, you, you know, you get interest rates less than 5%. So we also, in this year's budget, we put in a place $1 million. Mm -hmm. So if you earn less than $50,000 a year, 
And if you uh, uh, don't pay interest rate less than uh, uh, more than 5%, for example, you may be paying 4.5, in this year's budget, you'll now pay, pay 3.5%. You give an additional $1 million. So that's the actual methodology or the actual practical implementation of the policy framework. Okay. Kamal, very interesting, and I know this is quite close to the sugar industry. Um, there's a lot of talk back and forth by almost all political parties mm -hmm. of how much per ton it should be paid, what will be the total cost if they come into form government, the next government, etc. I've seen you uh, in one of the daily newspapers, I think you were in a campaign meeting uh, some time back, uh, talking about it. What is your personal view and the party's ten as a total for the sugar industry? And as you talk to the farmers there, I think that evening, of uh, paying them a certain amount per ton, yeah, I don't. I don't have a personal view. It's our collective right. view. Okay. It's we. Okay. So okay. it's a we. Yeah, okay. It's a we. I'll get to the next question. So we once you've answered this question, the NFP mm. will implement a minimum guaranteed price of one hundred dollars per ton for all cane farmers from this season. Right. And from this season. If I could just right. ask a follow-up. And we will. Again. We will. We will also maintain the subsidies on weedicides and fertilizers that comes to around five to seven dollars, depending on the acreage and the tonnage. We will also maintain the one-third contribution that is currently being provided on the purchase of mechanical harvesters by farmers who form cooperatives. Right? We will also maintain the planting grants for cane and as, as, as well as the grant for plowing fallow land to increase tonnage. The current policies are not working. Our sugar industry produced 3.22 million tons of cane in 2006, <coughs> that's before the coup. Now, despite millions of dollars being pumped in into by the Baini Marama and the Fiji First governments for almost 12 years, our production has come down to 1.6, 1.7 million tons, almost 50 percent. The case is similar for sugar production. If you do the number that, of how, active, how, how number will of you be able cane to grows has reduced from over 18,000 to as, as you've mentioned yourself, thousand. and we'll get to the Secretary General shortly, as you've mentioned, it's going down, claiming to be going down, etc. But how are you going to sustain this, and where will you get your funding to be able to take care of all these things that you've mentioned, this whole long list of things? Funding will be provided for in the budget. So that means, for example, again, that correct me if I'm wrong, costs will cutting, be reduced, cutting, cutting elsewhere? Costs, cutting costs. There are a lot of things in this budget that, Would you that be doesn't able to have been uh, costed a few of well, them? right? Same is for, for, for infrastructure, for example. So we have allocated around what, almost four four billion? I don't know. We have allocated well, around four billion. Speaking of cost or something cutting, for, I for, do for have roads. something that I'd like Look to ask. Look at the condition of our roads. Okay. What is that? So it's actually not four billion. It's five hundred million dollars. Five hundred million. No, okay. I'm saying in total over no, no, over let's period. Talk about, let's talk about budget. Yeah. You see annual budget. This basis. budget has got five hundred and twenty-eight million dollars. Yes. I know that. Yes. It was six hundred fifty-three. So came to six thirty-five. NFP come on. NFP to be able to do what they're thinking of doing should they form government and get the sugar industry all going again, according as he has not answered the question. Yeah. Where is going to get the money from? Where you will cut funding from places like roads. You'll get money to buy selling of FSC assets. That's what you are saying. That'll go to the stabilization yeah. fund. That's what you are saying. Stabilization fund. Yeah. Well, the, ask, the question is We are saying that we will get the money. Okay. But this where question from? was also asked. No, in where 20, from? You, this mentioned question was also asked in 2014 when the leader said that he'll reduce wet. You are saying where from? Where from? Hmm. Right. Yeah. You reduce wet to nine nine percent. Yes. Yes. Because so we worked we it out. So do it. We worked <laughs> it out too. We worked it out too. <laughs> Present us your budget. The leader, Present the leader moved us your a budget. motion in Parliament in, 20, in 2016 for a minimum guaranteed price. Mm. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, right? we'll, we'll, that was rejected. And he, said, on, and, you, and, you and he said, and he pointed out in the budget. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's very uh, interesting. Not the question. My, my he question is, out should you, where in the budget the money will come? Come on. Should you cut down costs and the budget for roads, for example? Let's just take it for example. Doesn't that mean that you are actually taking away something which is actually in need? For example, roads. And I'm saying it will be definitely roads. So if you take something away from roads and pump into the sugar industry, and good, because that's what you want to do, that's great. But once you do that, doesn't that mean that you're neglecting other things such as roads if you do that? You need only around $50 million to implement this policy. right? Even if you take out $50 million from the FIRA budget, in fact, it should be taken, more should be taken out from there. Where is the value for money? That's what I'm saying. In total, this government has allocated, what, 
close to 4 billion. I don't have the figures of hand. So it's sugar industry, 50 million. Right. 50 million. You need around 50 million dollars to implement the policy of the minimum guaranteed price. Okay. Well, on that note, so he's saying that NFP is uh, proposing $100 per ton with the subsidies and everything else that he said. Uh, FFP is saying $85 a ton. Why is it that you're not offering more? They seem to be offering $15 more. Why is it that you've stuck to 85 Because we believe in having sustainable policies. We so $100 is unsustainable. Yeah. So we believe in having sustainable policies. We believe that in, when you implement a particular initiative, it needs to continue to stay. Mm -hmm. And you should only improve. You do not actually, after a couple of years, after you won the election, that's what they're hoping to do, then they'll roll back. You see, again, I go back to my fundamental point, And that being, even with this $5 minimum wage, they cannot give you a clear-cut answer. Bullshit. You're saying bullshit. Okay. You we'll, we'll let him, we'll let him <laughs> complete. Come on. You so, see, yeah. this is, the reaction is he knows I'm telling the truth. That's why he's reacting that way. I, I do not say those words when uh, he was making all sorts of entrances. That's the caliber of people you've got standing as candidates. Hmm. So you have, so you have somebody who's saying five dollars an hour, but I'll consult. Maybe hundred days, I'll do it. Right? So, uh, people within their own party are saying something else. He's saying I have not seen the video. That's the level of inconsistency even within their party. That's the kind of inconsistency you see in Sodelpa too. Now they both of them are alike. Now getting back to the point, what we have said. Now, the EU uh, quota subsidies are all off. So FSC actually has to compete in the world market price. This is the reality. What we have said, obviously world market price varies every year. Commodity prices fluctuate. The chairman of FSC is Vishnu Mohan, a man who's dealt with commodities not just here, but also in places like Africa, etc. So we've come up with a figure of $85. So come what may, even if the world market price, for example, next year drops to $50 a tonne, and that's the price FSC gets, we will still pay the farmers $85 a tonne. That's what they don't tell you. They said, oh, it'll cost me $50 million. Nonsense. The world market price drops, they still get $85. Stabilization fund is created by FSC, selling some of the assets, some of the redundant assets, underutilized assets, they put in the, in the, uh, provide the seed funding for stabilization fund. We've said later on, the government can also contribute to the stabilization fund, because obviously funds can run out. Now, from that perspective, we will still continue with all the initiatives that this government has put in place, the weedicides, the pesticides, etc., the fertilizer, your new cane farmer uh, you know, planting, the cane harvesters, the whole shebang. Everything will be there, and we'll continue with that. It's steady. The farmers who are actually on the ground understand this. In the same way, those women in the garment factories understand this basic economics, which they don't seem to. And we said, from there, of course, things will improve. But let's dip our toe in the water, Surely, you know, surely we're putting our entire feet in. So that's the position we've taken. It's not an irresponsible position. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for that great, great debate. Come on. Tell us. Yes. Yes. And I think this is something that they've also been campaigning on, and I have seen uh, the posters that uh, NFP has taken out. Now, it, there is one, po one of the policies you, the party stand is they will continue, but there will be little tweaks and changes here and there. Again, as I said, you'll be able to tell us more. But converting all the current loans to grants, I believe, that's what you're talking about, NFP, or the TELS loans, the current no, ones. We're not talking about that. But uh, on, on, on that note, just, that. just to get mm -hmm. elaborate on that, it said very clearly, because mm -hmm. one of your candidates, uh, Riri Damodar, had posted up a... Uh, a a poster, poster yeah. which had details on it saying that uh, loans, uh, converting loans to grants for those with combined family income of $30,000 and less for all student debts, as in those who would not be able to pay off uh, that would be, you know, wouldn't have to pay it off mm. anymore. What about the numbers then? What would that mean? How much would, how much would that accumulate into? Of course, there's another thing with numbers that we'd like to get into later on. If I would have liked if Mr. Biman Prasad were here, given that this, he's an economist. This is the TELS policy. Was this the poster? Yes, he had said that. So uh, what, what do where you have to say it, on that? Is it, is it? it says continuing with existing National Topper Scholarship. Okay. Right at the bottom. Renaming it as a Right at the bottom, right at the bottom uh, come out. All student loans. All student debt under TELS since establishment of TELS for those with a combined family income of less than $30,000 right. be converted to grants. Right. Which, yes. is, which is right. Right. So everyone less than thirty and below? 
combined family income, combined family income, students from their okay. own tails will be converted to grants. Now, uh, Kamal, again, because I give, of, give you the opportunity to answer that. Sugar, you've already mentioned, cutting here and there, cutting <coughs> roads, taking out 50 million. Is this the same policy in the same way you'll be getting money to write off these loans? Uh, because it will become a sort of a burden on the government of the day. Uh, should you form the next government? This money has already gone out. Okay. It's not in the government. Keep right. it. No, but it's what I'm saying is when you, if you write it off, it's already gone out. And how much of it is coming back? Okay. So, so in million? the government balance sheet, if mm. you read the budget books, you yeah. see in the, in, uh, after okay. head 50, you'll see that's the amount of money owed to government is yes. reflected in our balance sheet. Yes, yes, yes. So, so you're reluctant to talk about that. Let's I'm not reluctant to talk about this. Well, you I don't am want saying to give that, us a figure, that rightfully, obviously. rightfully, Tell started in 2014. Okay. Right. Students coming from family, com families whose income is less than thirty thousand dollars, right? Their loans, students who have completed tells, mm. their loans would be converted to grants so that they don't have to pay. Okay. Right. But you'll continue with tells. Tells will continue. Tells will continue. Like I said, mm. the current topper scholarship will be renamed as academic mm. excellence it's scholarship. It's scholarship. Yes. Right? Yes. right. Okay. Right. The restructuring of the 12 priority areas of education. Okay, well, let's look at some of the uh, policies that aim to better those who are going to be seeking higher education. You're saying that NFP is proposing free first-year degree studies at any of the three universities for all students enrolling in 2019. Yes, we are saying that. Across the board, any degree program that they want to do. Absolutely. That the government is going to pay for it. Absolutely. Where would the money come from, right. Mr. Ayer? Government will pay. Government will pay. How will Currently, they are on tells. They're not paying. They only pay after they but start employment. But it's tells, which would mean that they would pay After they back. start employment. When they will start repaying? They, so they start, they'll start repaying, and also this government okay. has provided so them some incentives. that They pay a certain amount, and then the other amount will be written off. Okay. So similarly, we are saying that first-year degree students will have free tuition. If that right. was a sound policy, Mr. Right. Syed Kayum, how is it or why is it that maybe FFP didn't come up with this? You see, what he's, what he's not telling you is that he's saying, well, government is paying for it in any case. Mm. Yes, but government also in its balance sheet anticipates a repayment. repayment. So he's just thinking up till here. All the policies is up till here. In fact, all the policies are just up to the elections. It's just basically sweet talk. So you can tell somebody, hey, you know, well, don't worry, you don't have to pay, we'll write it off, it's all really good. I'll vote for NFP. But what's going to happen four or five years down the track when the repayments are supposed to come in? Government is not going to get that funding. Today, 50% of the population is below the age of 27. So you have a young population, means that when you have young people, we'll get more babies. So we need to think about those people's children also. There needs to be sustainability built into the system. You don't just say, well, you know, you pay it off now. Oh, you know, first year, yes, we write it off. And anyway, it's coming from the budget. But what about later on? So we are thinking, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years ahead. We've actually put in place a 20-year development plan. We have a short-term, five-year development plan. So people need to understand. See, the, 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 the beauty about what NFP is saying, it sounds fantastic. It's very sweet. But it's highly irresponsible. And it's just to people, seduce people with, to, to vote. But people need to think long term. And this is what we have been saying in our campaign meetings. Please think long term. What Please think, think about that? the future. We don't believe in seducing people. We believe in bringing back smiles and improving the livelihood of our people. And this tells policy, apart from what I just mentioned, will also cater for students whose marks are above 250 up to 300 who don't qualify for scholarship and who come from families of incomes of less than $30,000 to be given merit-based scholarships to a suggestion which was made in the 2015 budget by our then president, which was agreed to by the Fiji First General Secretary, but he said that maybe later. Not now. Now, your party leader, Mr. Biman, uh, uh, has been in parliament. So, of course, he would have had a look at the figures, yes? And then he's an economist and he would be able to, you know, figure out which <coughs> policies, which initiatives would be viable, which ones would be sustainable. Why do you think that, of course, we did invite him to come along, but he declined in, 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 in his stead. He sent you, Mr. Iron. We appreciate you being on the show. 
yet you are still not answering you've said that the money is going to be you know brought by the government we will find money but you're not saying how when we asked you how much these uh, loans that would be converted to grants is going to cost the government you refuse to give us a number so what about finding money when all these policy initiatives were initially implemented were questions being asked where the money will come from is <laughs> yeah. laughing yeah. money came by money <laughs> came by from, from increasing taxes fines fees and charges which have risen astronomically maybe <laughs> if we have a leaders debate before the elections yeah. next week maybe we are saying the they leader comes in and then maybe lunch okay this money is there something is there. come on something that it i want to touch on <laughs> now is this moving me from the scholarship generations for baby in these bodies now that's a hollow okay hollow okay. Okay. you want one, one of your <laughs> candidates is going back to it again uh charanjit mm-hmm. singh in his uh, page in his uh, campaign <coughs> page has stood up in a campaign meeting i believe and uh, said that hardware companies have benefited from the winston deal that was set up by the fiji first government and he has made some accusations uh, which i'm pretty sure you're aware of and at the same time he said taking it from one hand and also giving giving in one hand and taking from another does that imply corruption yes that's what i was going to ask so i you say i you saying that's not name he did not name any business houses or uh, hardware companies it's easy to pick the amount of hardware companies in the country anyway taking money but actually but on 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 that uh, hardware companies mm-hmm. thing uh, i just remembered that he had said quite uh, implicitly it said three gujarati hardware companies Company. and of course Very we only specific, know of three yeah. And I, I'll, I'll name the three that are here if we're going to narrow it down. And I'm not saying, no way am I implying that these are the companies that Charan is talking about. But we've got the three big players, Arshi Manupai, we've got Vinod Patel and Kasabias, and all owned by the Gujarati community. Mm. But he's made some uh, accusations about that. So does that mean that you are saying, or not you saying, but the party or the individual candidate is saying that, yes, they've given money to Fiji First campaign, and he specifically says to the... Uh, prime minister and the attorney general but at the same time they made a lot of money through the winston appeal so what's wrong with it so is are you wrong with it i you, you pointing towards corrupt practices come out he doesn't say about corruption he says they have donated right. huge amounts of sum to fiji first okay. which is correct okay which is correct but right how but to are link you it to the winston thing right. you must remember one thing hmm. there were two companies there were two companies that swiped off the cars that were given by government after winston and did not supply the material to the cyclone victims they had already profited they already had money in their bank accounts but they didn't and i i don't know how much they were penalized because the fiji first general secretary the minister for economy had said that they were going, going to be penalized for not delivering the pem uh, material to the cyclone victims between the two of them they would have made probably close to more than 70 million dollars so that, million that's, dollars. that's 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 right? quite that's, a while that's, that's the amount of money that's that that is the amount we will that, need your thoughts that's, on that that's the, 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 the amount that, that is the amount they would have received by getting the card swipe by the cyclone victims that's million. what i'm saying 70 million two, that because they are the two largest hardware dealers right okay. the, where they penalized where did they pay a penalty for non delivery of the material on time to the tc winston victims that's 70 million uh, general secretary right. uh, and that at the same was, time that's the asking about that, that, that is a big amount yes. that uh, kamal has just mentioned 70 yeah. million dollars that could have been shared maybe almost 35 million each yeah, if you take on average you know this is this is the issue we've noticed that from nfp as we get closer to elections they the hypothesis is getting all more and more fantastical their theories are getting more and more fantastical because they're getting very desperate this man has just pulled out 70 million dollars from the air absolutely no clue he has absolutely no clue as to how he's going to fund tells absolutely no clue how he's going to fund the reform of what they're proposing the sugarcane industry and he then he has the audacity to pull out these figures you see this is the problem this is the problem when you get somebody here sitting down who does not understand economics who has not dealt with figures he has not been in parliament at least if biman was here biman would have had a much better idea in respect of all the debates he's attended to in particular with the economics and he is you know uh, somebody who has dealt in that area the reality is of course 
there were delays in supply of material. There was. We accepted, we recognized that. People had been paid penalties. The reality also, there's a country shortage. We had to open up the market. We allowed for cement to come from other countries, which we normally protect our local cement factories. We allowed for timber to come across at zero rating because of the fact that we ran short of timber. Winston cost us nearly $1.3 billion US dollars worth of our GDP, of our GDP. That was the level of catastrophic impact of Winston. No, we're not, we're not thank, building thank some little hut. Thank you for that comment. Thank you very said, much. He said that I don't understand economics. I don't have the intelligence because that's because I never I said intelligence. Right? I never said intelligence. He, I just simply asked that those two companies, whether they paid their penalty or not. That's what I asked. And they didn't supply. He, had, he admitted now, he defended, he defended them by saying that there was shortage of <coughs> material and they had to open up, you know, give concessions or open up or get whatever timber. I, but whether I, they paid penalty or not. Just a minute each can after I, this I, so we can, can go on. Yes, I, uh, go on, Mr. Saifi. He's Saif getting really hysterical. Yes. He needs to control himself. I'm not hysterical. You uh, are. <laughs> I'm not. I'm <laughs> very calm. We'll give the General Secretary a chance and then we'll come. I did say that they pay penalties. I yes. did say that. I did say that. Right? You heard. I mean, obviously, he's got auditory impediment too. Okay. Now, the, the fact of the matter is that these um, uh, hardware companies, nobody's defending anyone. Now, I'm not going to name companies. I'm not going to call them by the ethnic group that they belong to. Mm. See, again, I want to, let's talk about the substance. You have these candidates of theirs doing the shopping trolleys, doing, making all sorts of pronouncements. Then he's saying, I don't know about that. I only know about what the party leader says, the party says. If they're already doing it now, even outside parliament, imagine what they'll be like inside. They won't have agreement. They'll be in shambles in the same way that Sodelpa is and was. And will continue to be. So there is no consistency in policies. There is no consistency in policies in them. This particular candidate of theirs saying Gujaratis. See, when you when you do that, given the history of our country, the moment you people running mm -hmm. campaigns on your TV station, saying when you identify people, identify them by the individual self, don't call them by the ethnic group because you get into ethnic profiling. This is what is at stake. This party is perpetuating it. By not even, the leader is not even, see he says bullshit again. Thank you for your <laughs> comments, Mr. Sayed. Thank you. Okay. This is the yeah. level yeah. of the, what they're going into. Yeah. When you actually point it out to them, he can't that's, control. That's, that's he can't very, control himself. He can't control himself. He says bullshit. By their, uh, he calls bullshit. Are your candidate did it, man? Your candidate did it. Your candidate did it. And he said, Gujarati hardware companies? Yeah. Why don't you talk to him? Just one minute from you, Mr. Ayer, on <laughs> that before we move to the next topic. What do you have to say to that? From what, what, what the General Secretary has said. On the hardware or on the ethnicity? On both. <laughs> on both. And I would also like you to come out. Just point out to me if that 70 million is a proof or it is just an accusation. Or have you got evidence on that 70 million? We'd like to know. I mean, it's, it's quite a well, the big I said, I said between mm. those two companies. Yeah, between the two companies. Between the two companies, they would have sold over 70 million dollars worth of hardware no, to over. DC Cyclone victims. No, it's over. Right. Okay, so would have right. as in like you don't have evidence right. as yet. You are just because they were the two largest suppliers. Okay. It's not accusation. They were the two largest suppliers. Okay. How much of it, you know? Yeah, we're doing throwing, so. Okay, okay. Let's, let's move the, on to just some... Uh, one quick one. Is that because material the word, was supplied? The word that was used by your candidate, Saranjit Singh, the word Gujarati. Now, your party has always said, that's one of the other things that you've said, is calling everyone by a common identity. And everyone in Fiji is known as Fijians. Uh, that was in, in, uh, done by the government, current uh, sitting government. It's in the constitution. Too. And it's in the constitution. The Gujarati. Is that a correct thing to do? pointing out a particular ethnicity or a race, which is a very sensitive matter for our country. Uh, you, you know that NFP has known that as well? Yes, we know. Mm. I mean, one should not call anyone by any name, you know, whether you're Gujarati, you mm. South Indian or North Indian, or anything. That's not right. We know that, right? He's been saying that we have been calling everybody something, which I haven't heard that. The party leader hasn't had that, right? If Charanjit Singh is doing that, 
I'm now I know that he's doing it. I have known. <laughs> we we have got. Enough. I'm not on social media. <laughs> we have got. Yeah. And I don't have fake accounts or trolls like you do. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right, gentlemen. But he knows when we're having a meeting, but he doesn't know what his candidate is saying. This is ridiculous thing. The question should be asked: Did because his party? Because the business community was contacted did, did, did by his, someone. Did his party leader call Saranjit Singh and say, "Hey, don't say Gujaratis"? When was this yeah. posted? <laughs> this post is on his page that was posted about two weeks ago. If you do want, we've got a copy of this that was downloaded off Taranjit's page where he stood up and said that. And mind you, uh, we do have the hardware companies as well wanting to comment on that matter. And uh, for that matter, we'll be running something in our news. They should comment. But uh, then we'll... But <laughs> you see, again, he's not answering but, the question. But the thing he's is, the you is are saying, Kamal, that you or the I party leader, you are not I aware I of don't, this. I don't. I am not aware. I personally am not aware. Okay. And I don't condone that. Okay, in the interest of time, right. since we do need you to assess... You don't condone your party leader told no, Charan party party leader leader We do need what? your Party analysis. leader didn't tell Charan. What, what, what is it? Party didn't leader the party Charan. leader call in Charan and say, don't say Gujarati? You ask the party leader. Are he's your leader. Why should he? He was the party leader. <laughs> okay. You send him email. All right, sir. So let's, yeah. let's, let's bring it back to the table. Let's center it back. Of course, this is, this is on the campaign trail for both parties. And of yeah, course, every single, every single answer, answer that it's either of you give <laughs> would help one Fijian on make, their, make their decision <laughs> on making a vote. All right, let's... Yeah, let's so, you want to do ethnicity not because of food on table? I didn't say that. What did you say about I said your candidates... Yeah. We also know some things on your candidates, but that's not going to put food on the table. That's what I said. What what has that got to do with food on the table? Yeah. Okay. Right. So Here we are talking about issues. Let's, let's, let's that's what I'm saying. Let's issue, that's what I'm saying. Big issue in this country yeah. is ethnic division. It's a history. We've got to deal with it. You don't deal with it because you're going to join hands with Sudalpa. That's your problem. That's a blatant lie, Mr. Sayed Kayyum. Right, Rambuka said himself. That's a blatant lie. Rambuka said it. That's a blatant Go lie. To you are lying through the skin of your teeth. <laughs> so, yeah. so, Mr. 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 Iron, you're <laughs> showing more. <laughs> no. Mr. Okay. Mr. Iron, okay, no. on, on, on that yeah. note, you're saying that it's said a. It. No. If Rambuka I could just get a word ed in edgewise. Rambuka, he said it. Yes. Mr. Rambuka did appear on our show a few weeks ago. He came on for the record, and we had asked him this. We had asked your party leader, Biman Prasad, this as well. When we asked about partnership slash coalition talks, Mr. Biman outright denied it, said no. Yes. We did not. We but then Mr. That. Rambuka, I'm not done yet, sir. You will have your chance to answer. Sure, Mr. Ahead. Rambuka had said that there were talks. And on that note, by that virtue, Tupon Rani Dalo, she decided to leave NFP altogether and form a new party, Hope, on the basis of the fact that NFP was having talks with Sodalpa. With all of that, do you still deny that NFP and Sodalpa were having talks? Firstly, firstly... Miss Drodindalo knows the truth why she left. And we hope for her sake she's not lying. Well, you should tell us whether she's lying Secondly, or not. Secondly, uh, that's for her to say. I'm not going to talk about someone who's left the party. Right? So uh, just, 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 just to, to answer the question, the party. Mr. Mr. Ayer. Let me come back to it. We did not have any talks on a coalition with any political party. Sure enough, there were suggestions made by others for one bus kind of thing, that all opposition parties unite. But we had said clearly, the decision made by our party's working committee on the 26th of uh, June 2016 was that NFP, just as it did in 2014, will contest the 2018 general elections on its own. That's more than two and a half years before the elections. Okay. Right? That decision was reinforced by our AGM on the 3rd of <coughs> September 2016 at Penang Sangam School in Rekereki and again reinforced by our working committee on the 19th of November 2016. What the working committee mandated the leader to do is to have talks with every political leader, including the Prime Minister, on issues of national interest, on good governance, on transparency, on accountability, on the holding of free and fair elections. So if he did talk with leaders of other opposition parties, it was only to do with election issues. And not partnership or coalition? No partnership, no coalition. Okay, come out, come out. Now the elections is just about two weeks away. Say for that matter, if that is revisited, and if there's a proposal on the table, say one party does not get a majority, 
Have you guys gone back since then and spoken about forming a coalition or a partnership to ask the Fiji First Government should that need arise? Does that mean forming coalition with one of the parties such as Sodelpa, Hope, Unity or Labour for that matter? Our focus right now, Indra, mm. is to contest these elections and try to form government. Okay. The party's official position is that we are not thinking or talking to anybody of a possible coalition. Okay. But if it does come, then you cross the bridge at that time? If, for argument's sake, mm. any political party does not get the majority of the seats, which is 26, mm. right? then obviously there will have to be talks on a coalition. Our party leader has clarified on other talk back shows <coughs> that coalitions are a matter of negotiation mm -hmm. when it comes to that. Matter of negotiations on policies, on issues. So any political party can talk to any political party at that matter. Right? Okay. That also includes, also includes Fiji First. So you're willing to talk to Fiji first should the need that's, arise? That's what the leader said, okay. that he will... He so for the record, uh, Mr. Ayer, if the need arises and you have to talk to Honourable Prime Minister, current Prime Minister and his party, you will talk to them. Oh, likewise, they have to talk to us if they don't. So we'll ask him that question a bit Actually, more. Uh, the General Secretary had... Our a party leader report. will talk to all political party leaders if he's approached. Uh, Mr. Including Sayadu, Fiji first. Two, two weeks ago you appeared on For the Record and you had stated, of course, we had posed the same question to you that should it come to that point where FFP would need to form a coalition, you had, of course, said that you are open to a coalition with any party. Do you still stand by those words? No, we have said, I never said that. But well, we you had did. implied that. No, no, see, this is, this is a problem. Why say I implied that when I did not say it? So would you, you can't be or would you not it. be? What we have said, and the Prime Minister's position is very clear on this, is that we talk to people we, who have the same values and principles in us, as us. They don't, so Delpa does not. These two parties don't have the same values and principles. They can't even control the people in their own party. You have the people making uh, statements about Gujaratis and others. They cannot even get their finances right. They don't even do the costing of their proposals. You have Sodalpa, obviously, Rambuka wants to go back to the 1997 constitution under which Ethiopia land was permanently alienated. You had a racist constitution. Fundamentally, people have voted on the basis of ethnicity. So we cannot have any agreement with them as far as the values and principles are concerned. So please don't say I implied things. You don't read into things. You take what we're saying. So that's the position the PM has always said and main, maintained. And in fact, we've said this in parliament also. So that is our position. We believe that we will win majority of the seats. That's our position. We also believe that NFP and Sodelpa, in the event, God forbid, there is no outright majority, will actually form a coalition together. Because if you look at uh, uh, Biman Prasad's uh, comments and utterances and statements in parliament and outside parliament, they have never come out emphatically and made any comment against Sodelpa. In fact, at times when they should have stood up and said things, even when we had the anniversary of the, for, uh, the first coup in Fiji, not a single word. They only said, we condemn coups. But to be, they, they weren't able to have that sort of cathartic approach to the events of 87, to the events of 2000, and what it meant, and where we were and where we have gone to, because they are frightened to upset, or somewhere or the other upset the Sodalpa people. So it is more likely the people of Fiji should know that Sodelpa and NFP, in the event there is no outright winner, will form a coalition. That's more likely to, for the, I mean, that's true. I mean, he should admit that. More likely for them to form a coalition with each other than for NFP or Sodelpa to form a coalition with Fiji first. Just and we will not with them. Oh, thank you, yes. General Secretary. Once again, it is like. Uh, Once again, it's like, with and, and let, me, let, me, let me say this, Fiji First, particularly the Prime Minister and the Attorney General, are too obsessed with 87 and 2000. But <coughs> the Prime Minister should explain his statement he made while opening a church at Nandoi village Rewa on 22nd of May 2008, where he said, where he told the villagers after a day after his conversation with 
the ousted Prime Minister, Garasi, and the then President of the Methodist Church, Lesiasa Ratamadada, which he said in Fijian, and it was translated, that the military did the coups of 87, 2000, and 2006 because politicians had failed. Right? He said that. Okay. Which means we that the five-week-old government of Dr. Timothy Bavandra, the NFP Labour Coalition government, was a failure. That the government of Mahendra Choudhury was a failure, and so was the was the multi-party cabinet in 2006. That's the Prime Minister's statement is to go okay. by. He should explain that. We, we will ask then, him yes. when he's here. He's not here to defend yes. himself on what was said or what no, was not said. He just mentioned 87 in 2000. So I mentioned see, this man is clutching at straws. I'm not he's talking about some. Uh, how can we believe him when he can't even get his speakers right? I the reality is this: straws. that Josiah Warenge Beni Marama is the only prime minister, only leader who has had the guts, who has had the guts to implement in the true, both in spirit, in law, and in practice, common and equal citizenry in this country. Only leader. The only leader who's had the guts to call, have everybody call a Fijian. He's smirking. He should know this. He's, a, he's an NFP person from a very long time. He should know what happened in the streets of 87, during 87. He should know what happened in 2000, when coups were justified on the basis of ethnicity. That's a fact. He's had the guts to do that. And I'm telling people, those people who actually believe in common and equal citizenry, to value that. We need to value that because when you have common and equal citizenry, it does not mean that Ethiopia land is being taken away by everybody being called a Fijian. The culture is being somehow they are diluted. That's the sort of line. It's not. The reality is when you have a common and equal citizenry, it creates a level playing field. It allows everybody to feel psychologically, emotionally, that they have the ability to participate in the public space openly. That is a fact. They need to value that. A.D. Patel, actually, was the one who advocated for this. And in fact, unfortunately, and I've said this before, A.D. Patel died at the 11th hour. Siddiq Koya actually made a compromise. At that time, they did not agree to common equal citizenry and the electoral system, you know, one person, one vote, one value. Siddiq Koya compromised and said, okay, he did it in good faith. He said, let's, you know, let's have that. They said, we'll do a study. So Sir Lawrence Street came, did a study. He said, we need to move away from that. Unfortunately, the Alliance government, obviously, did not take that uh, report up. They put it up on the shelf. And so Sidi Kwez, unfortunately, good faith went to loss. So that's the reality of Fiji. And Benny Marama is the only one who's been able to do that. And he's trying to somehow undermine that. Pulling out some speed, somewhere given, somewhere. We don't even know the authenticity of that, whatever it is. But let's talk about the real issue. This is also what is at stake. And the forces against it are very strong too in Sodelpa. Dr. Wanga Nimbete, one of your candidates for the upcoming election, uh, I think last week, stood up and spoke about him being a student in Atambua in 87 and being, I believe, a doctor in the 2000 crisis. And he spoke at length very emotionally about how he feels towards the culture that occurred and things that occurred at the time. Now, NFP party leader, Dr. Biman Prasad, has come out and said that your candidates lack the knowledge of what happened in 87 and 2000. Oh, to clarify, the youth candidates. The youth candidates, the younger candidates. Sorry, who, who is it? Uh, Biman Prasad has claimed that the Fiji First Party's youth candidates mm. happen to lack knowledge and that they are talking about the 87 coups mm. and the 2000 coups without knowing the circumstances surrounding the event. I, I, I did not listen to, or I did not hear what Biman mm -hmm. said. But, you know, uh, we, we don't go around condemning the youth. I mean, it's child's talk. I don't want to get into mm -hmm. that. The reality is that they have the youth uh, supporting them. We have youth supporting us. We need to be focused, obviously, also in the future. But we have to be able to learn from what happened in the past. And we believe that at the moment, at this stage, in the transition stage, into creating a modern nation state with common equal citizenry, there are some people who are not up to speed with that and want to go back. This is why you have people like Rambuka talking about 1997, etc. I mean, the other day I heard, uh, I saw in uh, one of the newspapers, him saying well, being a Fijian is not only just about being a citizen. But what does that mean? So you see, again, is a whole you know, uh, process to try and undermine it. Just to contextualize it for most of the voters, of course, you stated the uh, numbers and the stats do reveal that the majority of the voters in the 2018 election are going to be young. They are young voters. So 
in that aspect of things, like you've not, like you said, we've progressed so much from those days to where we are now. Do you think the rhetoric that is being regurgitated about uh, things possibly moving backwards if we were to go back to doing vilification of race and religion, talking about how uh, you know common citizenry is not possibly a good thing, and of course accusations being made that the youth candidates don't understand the circumstances of both coups, th that would sort of not make uh, a lot of sense to most of the younger voters because they haven't actually lived through that and most of them may not have e actual experiences of going through that. Both your views on that, please. You don't start nitpicking and say that, you know, this particular coup was bad, this particular coup was bad. All coups are bad. We have had an overbearing stench of coups in this country four times. 87, twice, of which he knows perfectly well. He protested against it, we know. And he was one year later arrested for protesting under public emergency regulations. The same thing that under his status as chief legal officer was applied, unfortunately, after 2009. The 2000 coup, we all know that uh, near anarchy in 2000, right? and the 2006 coup, we had human rights violations in all the coups, in all the coups. So no coup is justifiable, neither 87, no 2000, no 2006. Right? That is why we are focusing purely on issues. Issues, issues that matter to all our people, bread and butter issues, issues of good governance, issues of transparency, issues of accountability. That will what makes a good government, right? a government of the people, for the people, by the people, a government that listens, a government that does not ride roughshod over people's mandate. That's what we want and that's what I think the people of Fiji want. Your thoughts, Mr. Sarkayo? You see, um, what he's talking about is what I call a very myopic view and it shows a lot of, sort of amateurish approach to political landscape in Fiji. The reality is that uh, even in 2014, we had Lesson Nyangarase, for example. You can go to YouTube and watch this. He said, if you vote for Benny Marama, if you vote for this constitution, you cannot pray to Jesus Christ. Nikonawe Kula, Mosese Bulitavu, uh, you know, advocating, uh, going, distributing this DVD, saying that if you vote for Benin Brahma, vote for the Constitution, all Itaukia land will be lost. Uh, you have people going around saying, you know, you cannot call everybody Fiji, and even Himan, when he came on the Aina, Aina show in 2014, when he was asked outright, should everybody be called a Fiji, and he are and numbed. You know, maybe he wanted 100 days to think about it. The reality is that we have those forces that are there. There are people who think like that. I mean, he must have had his head buried in the sand if he does not realize that. We, of course, are focused on bread and butter issues. There are, um, there's a multiplicity of issues that faces a country. Multiplicity of issues. You cannot just say, let's just focus on VAT and wages. Yes, those things are important. Governance is important. We build very strong institutions. They don't want to recognize. They're caught in a rut. They got come up with some cliche terms. They cannot get out of it. But the fact of the matter is, that is also a consideration. You are absolutely right. Many of the people who are voting in these elections have not experienced that. In fact, a person who was, for example, uh, 12 years old in 2006 is today, you know, 24, 25 years old. They've had 12 years of stability in their life. They've had 12 years of security in their life. That's what they have experienced. Then now everybody has a mobile phone. In 2007, 2008, a mobile phone cost, uh, unit cost was 99 cents a unit. Today's 22 cents a unit. We never had five up, ten up, all that. Now if you don't have a mobile phone, they think there's something wrong with you. These are the changes that have taken place. These people don't know any better. So, of course, they are these people. So what we need to do is to be able to also remind them of our history, what has happened, and that there are people. And frankly, you know, as the Prime Minister said last night, we were uh, opposite uh, Tadirwa village in the, in the squat area. I think it was called Kali, uh, Kali place. And the PM did remind them and said, look, the, the, the reality is that people need to understand where we came from. And the reality is that we need to, if you know where you came from, you'll definitely know where you're going. You cannot bury the past. But let's move away. He was hoping that in the last election, in this election, 
will actually be talking completely on policies, on economic policies, you know, responsibly. That's what we need to do as a country. Well, gentlemen, we've got less than aren't. two minutes before we wrap up. Uh, and, of course, we'd like to get your views on whether or not your leaders would like to appear on a political debate because, of course, we did invite Mr. Biman Prasad. He declined and sent Mr. Ayer. We would like to have a political leaders debate, and I hope that the invitation will be extended to your respective uh, leaders, and I hope that they do appear. Just before we wrap things up, why should anyone vote for Fiji first and, in essence, make sure that Mr. Bainimarama continues to be Prime Minister for another term. And the same question to you, Mr. Ayer. Why should anyone vote for NFP? And of course, with that, it would imply that Mr. Biman Prasad would be made Prime Minister. Just about a minute and a half each, if you could wrap that up. Mr. Ayer? Um, we have four years as a minority but effective opposition in Parliament. The NFP leader and his team have offered themselves to the public <coughs> for judgment. Right? And our judgment is by virtue of our policies. Our policies, our parliamentary performance, right? not the accusations being held at us, right? not Bivan Prasad being labelled an Indo-Fijian by Frank Baini Marama repeatedly. Not about 87 or 2000 or 2006 schools. Right? Not about Fiji being made uh, like Australia and New Zealand, as he said, you know, in 80 years' time. Right? Not about a dagger being put at somebody's neck if Fiji first doesn't win. So it's our policies. Our policies on tells, our policies on the sugar industry, our policies on the cost of living, our policies on the health services our policies of dialysis, our policies of making medication truly free, and above all, a clean, transparent, accountable, and open government. That's what NFP is offering to the people of Fiji, and we are confident that we will form government. Thank you very much. Mr. Sai, can you have a final word from you, please? Um, there is a wonderful uh, economic space that we are in currently. Uh, we have nine years of uh, economic growth. It's unprecedented. It's never happened in Fiji before. We have the lowest unemployment rate in the past uh, for the past 20 years. In the past 20 years, and we are in a good economic space. We need economic stability. We need economic consistency in policies to be able to take charge of this uh, opportunity. And let's even push it further. We have a young population. We know that there are people who are looking for jobs. We're creating more jobs. We're creating educational facilities. Do not disrupt this, because NFP and SODELPA do not offer any consistent policies. They will actually cause a lot of chaos and disruption to the economy. At the end of the day, our position is all the issues of land rights, cultural rights, all of these issues, tenants' rights, common equal citizenry, all addressed in the Constitution. We have the ability to seek redress through that. Let's not fight about that. Let's focus on the main issues. The main issues are the economic issues. The main issue is making sure that we have consistency in policies. We have equal participation of everybody, open merit recruitment system. Everybody is called a Fijian. We don't distinguish uh, between different provinces, etc. Don't squander this opportunity because the alternative to you is going to be, alternative to Fiji First is actually going to be economically disastrous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, Kamal, all the best to NFP and General Secretary, all the best to Fiji First. As the Geraldine said, we'll try and get the leaders. We've got one more show next week before we head off to the polls on the 14th of November. And definitely, I said, thank you very much. We could uh, speak for more, more hours and hours. But hope to see the Honorable Leader Biman Prasad, should there be a debate to appear with the Fiji First and uh, other po a political parties. So that was your full record. An interesting uh, talk back tonight between the General Secretary of the Fiji First and also the candidate from NFP, Kamal Area. Hope you enjoy your evening. We'll be back next week with another show. Good night.